one of the things I'm interested in is your uh, openness and explicitness around sacred principles and sort of transcendent ideas. And are you concerned that w the, the, this similarly will be used to undermine the uh, credibility of the movement? I think it helps that I have a PhD in molecular biophysics when I'm talking about that. So I do waff that around a little bit just as a kind of, you know, this, there's actually, as you know, the science behind some of the conversations around spirituality and basically for me it's an experiential thing anyway I've got I've had my own experiences that make me want to do things some people in the movement find it tricky you know and I've talked about how I'd like to see a mass psychedelic civil disobedience but that was just a personal opinion um, so it's not just outside it we, we, we can be ridiculed but we need a paradigm shift and to me uh, the paradigm shift won't come without at least some of us, I'm sure you know about the sort of shift to teal consciousness that's happening at the minute. So no, talk me through. Okay, it. oh, that's a really interesting piece. Um, so there is this paradigm, th there is a shift in consciousness happening. It sounds very hippieish when you talk like that, and I think it's really important that you want one of the main things from Extinction Rebellion is trying to remain a broad church. That if you have a very scientific paradigm and um, you you, you want to focus on uh, current politics and affecting current politics there's a space for you if you have a paradigm that says i want to walk the mary Markle line singing and praying then there's a space for you in it and that as again mickey Cashtan talks about both and you know sometimes things are set up against each other but they're not in opposition no. you know they're just they're just different perspectives and different needs mm. so the um there's a system called spiral dynamics and you look at different levels of consciousness that have happened throughout history and and they check in online at different stages and they check in online throughout your lifetime actually it's really cool uh, politicians have used it it's something you can measure by asking people questions and it's not like you're just one or the other so like the beige layer is the layer that babies are in it's like all about needs like i need a, i need the toilet i'm hungry or whatever and it moves up through animistic religions and different and they and you know when they came in online for humanity roughly from the geological record right Ooh, how how uh, um, well, I, I, I mean, give us an example. Can so, you, like, like, so the orange layer is the science layer, which came uh, in the 17th century. So we know uh, about that. Um, some people, you might argue, are sort of a bit stuck in that paradigm. And then the green layer is the progressive left. Um, so it's the idea of pluralism, and there's lots of different. Um, it's interesting the environment and equality. Uh, so, and then the red layer is the more tribal layer. Um, you know, it's like I'm I'm into this tribe. So, like when you're watching West Ham, your team, isn't yes. it? like when I'm watching Forest Green Rovers, it's like you're in your tribal. You know, there's nothing wrong with these consciousnesses. It's just, you know, there's a blue layer that's more conservative values about my family. You know, I I recognise and honour those values. I just don't only just have them. You know, I also recognise that um, everybody's children are my children. You know, it, it, the better part of me does. You know, so no, what's interesting is there's an emergence of teal consciousness and that's a kind of quite a leap and in teal consciousness you can see the other values and you recognize and honor them and appreciate their usefulness and their role and why they're there and um and so it's like not wanting to feel in these separations and what's really interesting is the teal consciousness there's others turquoise above that gets into the oneness and stuff but um the teal one is um it has three main bits to it one is um vulnerability another is it's p about purpose and this and the third one is it's about self-organizing decentralized organizing so if you read frederick lalu reinventing organizations businesses are emerging into these colors so like a mafia business would be red it's tribal you know you do what the boss says you get killed <laughs> like a, a a corporation that's all about making money would use the scientific layer to work out how to optimize profit then you've had the corporate social responsibility green layer but there's an emergent teal layer in business right that's purpose-led and that's where we need to go to what's a business that's an example of that um i'm going to say its name wrong because it's from the netherlands so apologies to the dutch people but there's something like Burtsburg or something it's this um business that focuses on community nursing and they're so good because they're self-organizing um and they they're, they're happy to get profit because profit helps them to get behind their purpose but they're so behind their purpose they got 80 percent of the market share and they started to teach their competitors how to be like them for free 
so that they could have some of the market share back because they wanted the whole market to be about ind- really good independent nursing. Do you see what I mean? The purpose is what drives them. And like, that's my feeling. I'm having, it's embarrassing what a good time I'm having in this social movement in a way because like I feel so in purpose and that's what I see when people go through this process which is face the abyss of these times, grieve, and then decide to do something about it. You, you you get through, your heart breaks open, you step into courage, and then you're in purpose. And I see that in this movement, and that's the power that's in it that's been driven by, like, a grieving. And some people, you know, Daniel Pinchbeck wrote about this, that the transition of humanity will happen because we'll face a collective trauma. And there are many traumas in the world. There's the trauma of how, you know, racism shows up in the world. There's the trauma of what's happening happening to homeless people but part of the trauma is that you can separate yourself off from that you can feel powerless about it and think and, and ignore it you know or you can feel in the drama of your own life there's something about the um ecological crisis where we can't we can ignore it but it won't ignore us you know it is going to get us all eventually and you you literally if you've got children now they are going to live through the times they are going to live through the consequences like it's baked into the science you know unless we do something semi-miraculous, which we could, if we put our minds to it. So there's something here about, like with an addict, you know, we are a deeply addicted, traumatised society. We're facing, we've hit rock bottom, like we're literally in the sixth mass extinction event or extermination event, better said, you know, life on earth's being killed off by us, our own future's being killed off, and the worst case scenario is a Permian mass extinction when 97% of all life dies, you know. The latest IPCC report says that the permafrost melting, that's the mechanism, that's what leads to the um, the, the mass extinction, the, the really full-on mass extinction event. So anyway, we're in that. You face that, and then to, so humanity can do a, it needs a step change doesn't it it needs enough of us to do a step change and i'm w- witnessing that happening it's very exciting but it's really tense because it's like we haven't got any time thanks for watching this podcast and going all the way to the end of it was usually kind of to click the bell it might not be there because over there and uh, subscribing so that we can infiltrate your serenity and peace of mind with jangling bells and buzzes thank you